Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here, and ahead of a potential snap election that some analysts believe could be on September 20th of this year, some major parties from the political landscape here in Canada are releasing details on what their platforms look like. And just today, the NDP released their big plan. It's a 115 page document. Take a look at this here. I've just been scanning through it, but one of the most interesting parts of it are their promises and commitments about a UBI, or more accurately, a guaranteed basic income. So in today's video, we're going to go over all of the details that we have so far, as well as some of the questions as to how this guaranteed livable income would actually roll out. But before we do, make sure to check out the links in the description where you can get 40% off the Canada Money Mastery Program with coupon code GROW, where we talk all about building wealth here in Canada, or you can just get two free stocks with the link down there when you sign up for Wealth Simple. But let's not delay it, let's get right into these details. And by the way, this is a 115 page document. There's lots of promises in here about housing, about changes to EI, other supports for Canadians, major things. So if you wanna be updated on those, there's gonna be videos out on this channel over the next few days, going into all of the fine details on what this platform looks like. So subscribe if you haven't already done so. But here is the livable income plan from the NDP. We're gonna go over this, we're gonna read this document, uh, and then we're gonna talk about some of the questions and some of the things that are still uh, left to be discussed. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see it more clearly if you're watching on your phone or something like that. Uh, they say that for too long, liberal and conservative governments have told Canadians that the real income safety net that keeps people out of poverty is impossible. They've chosen to hand out tax breaks to big, big businesses while underfunding the programs that people rely on when they're older, when they lose a job, or when they can't work because of a disability. This is one of the main points from the NDP saying, hey, the liberals, they're just supporting big business. We are actually going to help you as the NDP. They go on to say that as we grapple with the fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic, too many Canadians are living on the edge or sliding deeper into poverty. Even when the economy recovers, it's clear that those who are struggling right now will be at a disadvantage for a long time to come. We need big ideas to confront the challenges our country is facing. Uh, new Democrats believe that this is a critical moment to strengthen our social safety net and to improve income supports so that all Canadians can live in dignity and in security. We know that when we invest in meaningful income supports, it gives people a chance to live full and healthy lives. Okay, and they talk a little bit about the CERB in here, saying that with the CERB, uh, we've seen what's possible when governments mobilize to make a livable income a priority, but unlike the Liberals who moved quickly to cut these benefits, new Democrats won't stop there. We'll get to work right away building towards a guaranteed livable income for all Canadians. Now, of course, this is an NDP document, so they're going to slant it from their perspective, but as you know here on the channel, everyone's welcome just bringing you this information but let me know what you think down in the comments. But they go on here, I'll slide myself over so that you can see it more clearly. They talk about how they're gonna actually roll this out. They say they're gonna start this work immediately by lifting every senior and person living with a disability out of poverty and build from there until every Canadian can count on a basic levelable income when they need it. This will be complemented by bold new investments in housing, healthcare, post-secondary education, and training to set up all Canadians to succeed. There's talk about some debt forgiveness in here, we'll cover that in another video. But it seems like they're going to start the rollout if they were to ever uh, be in power by lifting seniors first and then uh, people with uh, disabilities, they would be the first ones to sort of, I guess, qualify for this guaranteed livable income. Again, not not a ton of uh, in, in detail um, sort of ideas on how exactly this qualification would work, but we're going to talk about that in a second. And they finish saying, in time, new Democrats will work to expand all income security programs to ensure everyone in Canada has access to a guaranteed livable basic income, making the creation of a guaranteed livable basic income a priority will strengthen our social safety net and finally ensure dignity, security, and peace of mind for everyone in Canada. So obviously there are some pretty big promises and commitments here from the NDP, but there's not quite as much detail as I would have liked to see from them. Um, they just say that they're going to implement this uh, this guaranteed livable income for all Canadians. They talk a little bit about who would be qualified for it first, but apart from that, no talk of the qualification or even how much it would be. Um, I believe uh, in the employment insurance changes, we're gonna cover that in more detail, um, but they talk about how they'd want to make it so that EI wouldn't be uh, less than $2,000 
$1,000 a month. So I imagine that uh, this uh, guaranteed livable income for people who qualify for it would likely not be lower than that $2,000 amount that the EI changes sort of are covering uh, the changes that they want to make. Um, but yeah, again, not too much information on who would qualify and how you would qualify for a program like this. Interesting in the terms of uh, what words they're using to describe this program, they're not calling it a universal basic income. Um, that sort of implies that everybody, no matter uh, what their qualification is and what uh, they just essentially say, hey, there's no qualifications, everyone's going to receive this. That would be a UBI in general. They call this a guaranteed livable income. So it's likely that this type of program would be income tested, much like many of the other benefits that are here in Canada right now, including the Canada Child Benefit, as well as some others, right? If you make above a certain amount in income, well, you'd be cut off from the, whatever benefit this is. Now, I there's there are some issues with the guaranteed livable income model in comparison to the UBI model. Um, certainly, uh, you'd have to worry about the disincentivization of people from um, sort of pushing to earn more, right? If you have a hard cap, say like if you make over $40,000 a year, you'd all of a sudden lose your UBI or your or guaranteed livable income as soon as you pass a certain threshold. Well, then it definitely disincentivize people from pushing over that limit. So again, we don't have the details on how the qualification would work. Perhaps they'd make it like the CRB. Once you earn over a certain amount, you have to start paying back 50 cents for every dollar you make. Again, it continues to disincentivize people building their own businesses and and going out there to to work harder to earn more money. Um, but again, the devil's in the details. We can't make any broad judgments on how this program actually is until we get those details. The other thing that, of course, will be a main talking point of people who are sort of going to uh, sort of talk against the NDP is that there's not a lot of details on how a program like this would be paid for. And that's sort of a general criticism of the entire 115 page document is that they don't really have an idea on how much it's going to cost. Let me show you this, uh, this from from a, an article I was reading earlier today. Um, so on the live stream, I showed this to people as well. Uh, and it seems like just before they released this document, they they said that it doesn't contain a costing breakdown on its promises, so they don't really know how much uh, this would even cost to, to implement all of these pro, uh, all of these programs. And they continue saying during a technical briefing with reporters before the release, a party official said that they plan on working with the parliament uh, parliamentary budget officer or the PBO to estimate what it will cost to implement their proposals. Now, if you don't already know, the PBO is essentially the agency. That might not be the best word for it, but it's the the office that will actually take policies from these political parties and run the numbers and say, hey, how much is this actually going to cost? So it seems like the NDP hasn't sort of done that work to have an idea of what this is going to cost up front. They're going to say, hey, PBO, hopefully you can tell us how much this is going to cost, and then we'll figure out how to pay for it. Uh, the one thing that Jagmeet Singh did emphasize in his press conference that we had on the channel this morning, we covered it live, uh, he said, uh, and this is one of his biggest things that he was emphasizing, was that they're planning on implementing a wealth tax for uh, of 1% on Canadians who have a net worth of over $10 million, saying that likely that would be able to play, pay for much of this. Um, but uh, again, devil's in the details. We need to see what this tax would look like and what potential loopholes there are, because if there's anything that people who are wealthy and have a lot of money are able to do, it's they're very good at tax planning. So if there's any way to potentially avoid that, it would likely be done by the vast majority of these people who could be affected by this new tax. There's also the growing belief that they may not even have to pay for it all, they could just take on more debt to pay for things. This is something that's going on in Canada right now. The vast majority of the programs that we have here in Canada and the supports and the, the various subsidies that are provided to Canadians, well, it's not paid for with tax revenue or any government revenue. Really, it's paid for with government debt where they issue Bank of Ca or Government of Canada bonds and people are able to buy these bonds. Largely, the Bank of Canada has been buying these bonds and is essentially funding government spending since the beginning of the pandemic. But there's this um, growing growing belief in, uh, and it's called modern monetary theory, that, hey, maybe we can just continue to inflate this debt and pay for these programs um, without having to worry about ever paying that off. The only risk is if interest rates go up, the government of Canada could end up paying more and more to service their debt. Uh, and at some point, our entire tax revenue could go towards paying for these programs, not just the programs, but only just covering the debt servicing or the interest payments on the debt that uh, we have here at as the as Canada as a whole. 
So interesting stuff here. You know I like to stay down the middle as much as I can and sort of just evaluate this stuff for you, but I do want to hear what you think about this. Let me know down in the comments. UBI and guaranteed livable income, whatever words you use to describe it, is certainly a controversial issue with so many people in support of it, but I'd say just as many people very much against it. So let me know what you think of it down there in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. It supports the channel. And again, check out all of those links in the description where we talk about building wealth here in Canada. You can sign up to uh, get those two free stocks if you haven't already done so. That's a great idea if you haven't already started investing. I recommend opening up a TFSA investment account, but we can talk a bit more about that later. But with all of that said, thanks so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.